Many firms took part in the initial phase of this project, which involves creating concept aircraft designs for submission to the Department of Defense. On 16 November 1996, Boeing and Lockheed Martin were given contracts for them to manufacture two of their concept demonstration aircraft, CDA, a piece. Under the contract, these fighters were supposed to show conventional takeoff and landing, CTO, carrier takeoff and landing, CV version, and short takeoff and vertical landing, STOVL. They were also intended to feature land demonstrations of a production representative aircraft systems, such as the Preferred Weapon System concept, PWSC. One important variation from prior programs was the ban of the corporations from using their own money to support development. Each was granted $750 million to develop its two aircraft, including avionics, software, and hardware. This constraint stimulated the use of low-cost production and assembly techniques and also prevented either Boeing or Lockheed Martin from bankrupting themselves in an endeavor to win such an important challenge. Boeing's plan for a competitive edge was to deliver considerably cheaper manufacturing and life cycle costs by reducing variances between the multiple GSF variants. The X-32 thus was based around a massive one-piece carbon fiber composite delta wing. The wing had a span of 9.15 meters with a 55-degree leading edge sweep and could contain up to 20,000 pounds, 9,000 kilograms, of fuel. The goal of the high sweep angle was to enable for a substantial wing section to be employed while still giving minimum transonic aerodynamic drag and to offer a favorable angle for wing-installed conformal antenna equipment. The wing would be a problem to build. The Compete on Cost strategy also prompted Boeing to choose a direct lift thrust vectoring system for the Marine's short takeoff and vertical landing STOVL, requirement, since this would merely involve the inclusion of a thrust vectoring module around the main engine. However, this arrangement required the engine to be situated immediately behind the cockpit and pushed the center of gravity forward from its customary location in jet fighters towards the rear of the airplane. To permit a neutral attitude hover, Boeing had planned, in the 1960s, a comparable supersonic fighter with a mid-center of gravity mounted engine with vectored thrust nozzles, but this never advanced beyond photos published in Aviation Week. By comparison, the Lockheed entry looked like, if anything, a smaller version of the F-22 Raptor stealth fighter. The Boeing in-house nickname of the X-32 was the Monica. Yet another effect of the selection of the direct lift system was the large chin-mounted air intake. This was required to feed sufficient air to the main engine to provide the thrust necessary to hover during the zero horizontal velocity phase when it could not exploit ram air pressure. A knock-on effect of this large intake was the potential direct visibility of the compressor blades to radar, see radar cross-section. Mitigation possibilities included variable baffles designed to block incoming radio waves without adversely affecting airflow. The two X-32 aircraft featured a delta wing design. However, eight months into construction of the concept demonstrator aircraft, the JSS maneuverability and payload requirements were refined at the request of the Navy and Boeing's Delta Wing design fell short of the new targets. Engineers altered the aircraft's design with a conventional canted twin tail that reduced weight and improved agility, but it was too late to change the aircraft. It was judged that they would be sufficient to demonstrate Boeing's technology. On 14 December 1999, Boeing unveiled both its concept demonstrators at its plant in Palmdale, California, in front of 5,500 attendees. While the X-32A was expected to make an appearance, the rollout of the X-32B was a surprise, as construction of the latter aircraft had started some three months after the former and was completed six weeks after the X-32A. Boeing attributed the rapid construction of the STOVL version to the use of digital design and assembly methods. After having the Pratt and Whitney F-119 engine installed in April 2000, the X-32A commenced low and medium speed taxi tests, 
which had been completed by late May. Due to the massive delta wing design of the X-32, Boeing demonstrated STOVL and supersonic flight in different configurations, with the STOVL mode requiring that some elements be removed from the fighter. The company promised that their conventional tail design for production models would not require separate configurations. By contrast, the Lockheed Martin X-35 concept demonstrator aircraft were capable of transitioning between their STOVL and supersonic configurations in mid-flight. The maiden flight of the X-32A, intended for CTOL and carrier trials, took place on 18 September 2000. From Boeing's Palmdale factory to Edwards Air Force Base, the aircraft, piloted by Boeing test pilot Fred Knox, took 2,200 feet, 670 meters, of runway before gaining airborne at 150 knots, 280 kilometers slash 170 miles per hour, at approximately 8 o'clock a.m. Shortly after takeoff, a minor hydraulic leak was detected and the flight was limited to 20 minutes from the intended 30 to 40 minutes. According to Knox, the F-A-18 pursue plane required a lot of afterburner to keep up with the X-32 during the first phases. During the flight, the aircraft reached 10,000 feet, 3,000 meters, gained a speed of 200 knots, 370 kilometers slash, 230 miles per hour, and obtained an angle of attack of 13 degrees. Despite the abbreviated flight, nearly 80% of the targeted test objectives were achieved. It was powered by a conventional variant of the F-22 afterburning turbofan, dubbed F-100 and 19 PW614C.